Okay, with Hashem's help, with bracha and hatzlacha, I'm so excited for us to be able to um, do this class, our crash course on laws of Tara Tamishbacha, which we opened it up to singles and married women. It was recommended by a few of the single girls that if this is a mitzvah that's important for us to practice when we get married, why is it so hidden? Why is it so like secret? Like, shouldn't it be taught to us and discussed about so that even those of us that don't know about it could possibly think about it because when you go on dates the guy says are you going to keep nida and you're thinking what does that mean some that might have gone to public school some that might have you know just have no connection with it and i thought it's a very um good and interesting point and it's good for girls to be aware of it and get comfortable with their system and cycle even before when they get married um i also wanted to dedicate this talk for complete complete refuah shlema for everyone that needs it especially for Michael Levi Bendina, a two-year-old in our Jewish community in the valley who's going through um, certain things and Hashem should give him Rafa Shema and all of all of our loved ones that need it should be returned healthy, home, safely and no more sicknesses uh, amongst anyone, only goodness and bracha and hatzacha and tefillah should be accepted by God for healing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you. Aiden Ezra Chaim Ben Dovora also should have complete, complete healing. So all the meditation and learning that we do should be contributed as a token of gifting and offering for their Rafah Shlema. Because we know Am Yisrael, we're all connected to each other. And whenever we hear of something, it affects all of us. So one of the things that we need to know is that the most am- amazing thing is the laws of Tara, Tamishbacha, family purity, like literally talks about the woman's menstruation, you know. You sit down and you think to yourself, like this Torah that, that was like the Torah that was written by God, like you know, three thousand some years ago. Five thousand is the Hebrew calendar, and like this t- timeline that's there in it, it had written about when a woman is menstruating and how long her cycle is, and like the time that she goes to the mikveh. Like there was no ultrasound, there was no sonogram, there was nothing there. Like how would anyone know how would any human power know when a woman is menstruating and for how long unless they were the creator of the female kind and the mankind right there's no way you would know this knowledge unless you were the creator of it so in the same torah that we read every shabbat in the book of vayikra chapter 18 line 19 when it talks about i think it's the parsha of achare mot that talks about all the forbidden relationship you can't have relation with your mother, your father, your brother, your your um, mother-in-law, your this, your that, animals, this one, that, like detail, detail, detail. One of it is a woman that's Nida. So one of the things that was brought up that was very interesting, we need to know that the halacha of Nida applies to a husband and wife. A husband and wife, a woman becomes Nida to her husband. A woman, the man that she has a ketubah, has a marriage contract, has a relationship. So unfortunately, we've heard cases of stories of guys that are so somewhat call themselves religious. And they sort of try to brainwash these naive girls thinking that if we're dating as boyfriend and girlfriend and you go to the mikveh, then we could be together. This is absolutely not permissible, not acceptable. The laws of Nida is for a husband and wife, woman and man that are not in a marriage, should not be having relationship, and you cannot kosherize it because you're taking advantage of taking the law, folding it according to your will and giving it over. So it's really important, or even, unfortunately, some guys that are Kohanim, they go out with a guy as a girlfriend, right? And they've been together and this and that, and then they say to her, listen, when I want to get married, we can't get married. And she says, why? And he says, because you're not a virgin. What are you talking about? The Kohen himself has to keep themselves Kodesh. This is like taking advantage of the system. You know, it's, it's like literally taking advantage of, of the system. The halacha applies to a married husband and wife. And intimacy and intim- uh, intimate act is not permitted between man and woman. There's no like loophole. This is not acceptable and this is not allowed. And again, it doesn't matter how velvet the guy's kippah is, how long the talit is, how long the beard is. You need to consult with a neutral person to become realistically of knowing what it is. 
there are many guys unfortunately no offense against any guy that's watching this but there are guys who take advantage of some knowledge that they have and they take simple girls who are naive who are very simpleton and they believe them because the person looks like that i always tell my kids you need to act torah not look torah anyone can look torah anyone can wear a thing on their head and look like they're a jewish but it's your masim it's your action that makes a difference so as women we need to understand that further Nida during the time of the Beit HaMikdash was very different than during our time. During the time of the Beit HaMikdash, when we had the Beit HaMikdash and the sanctification, when a woman was menstruating, if the Kohen HaGadol would pass by her or touch her, he would become Nida. But right now, because so many people have come into contact with either dead bodies or this and that, we don't have the same concept as we did during the time of the Beit HaMikdash. In Iran, some people held that a woman that's Nida can't cook for her husband, can't do this, can't do that. A lot of them was passed down to them after the destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash. Whereas those rules didn't apply when there was no Beit HaMikdash. A woman is allowed to cook a meal for her husband. A woman is allowed to sit and eat with her husband as long as there's something on the table. But some of the old age schools of people who moved to Iran, especially after the first Beit HaMikdash, they continue to keep these, which they made a lot of women like in their 60s now, feel like if they're nida, it means they're dirty. Nida has nothing to do with being dirty. The word nida means without life. That's what the word nida means. Nida comes from the source of nade, which means without life, right? A dead body is nida, like tam'e, like, you know, you become nida, which means without life, which means you're in a state of tam'e, right? Tum'a, tam'e means without life, right? A dead body is tameh, a dead animal is tameh, and a woman that's menstruating is tameh, right? What's, a, what's the similarity between them all? What's the similarity? A loss of potential life. A what? A loss of life and a loss of potential life. Beautiful. So when a woman goes into the state of nida, it only applies when? when she's married. Why? Because when she's married is the time when she has relation. When she has relation is the time which could lead her to becoming pregnant. Meaning, our beautiful diagram we have here, this is like actually it's an actual size of like the vaginal and what the uterus looks like and this is one of the only um, diag like the only, um, how do you say it? the only biological piece of us that can go from this, what are you studying? Nursing. Right? It's how big does it get when a woman is fully pregnant? Watermelon. Yeah, that it goes from being the size of a walnut, mm -hmm. it goes from the size of a walnut to expanding to a size of a watermelon and then shrinking back to a size of a walnut. Do you understand? the fascination of like what that is like this place where life begins where you know like child is uh the embryo is implanted so basically every woman has two ovaries and every month when from the time that a girl turns 12 years old and her body is maturing up to starting menstruation every month one egg gets released from here and comes down and sets inside of the uterus waiting to see if it's going to get fertilized or not and when it's not fertilized, it goes into menstruation, which the uterus wall, which was the blood wall that was created for pregnancy, sheds. So menstruation is when the uterus wall sheds. The uterus wall was nesting, getting ready for fertilization. It didn't happen, so it sheds and comes down the vaginal canal, right? So every month, and then some months, two can be released. So what's so fascinating is that these stages, um, so the stages, we're going to start the first day of the menstruation as considering it as the full moon, right? The full moon, what does the full moon look like? Nothing is there. Nothing is there. The full moon kind of looks sad, right? It's like missing, it's dark. And in the full moon is the beginning of the menstruation. It's the beginning, it's the week before the follicular week. So that is the time that a woman becomes nida. When a woman is menstruating, the uterus wall is shedding, her estrogen, if people want to look at it, you pass it on, the, 
the estrogen and the progesterone is going down, her excitement is going down, her levels of going down. Imagine, like what have you created that God says, hey, Mr. Husband, beloved, during the time my bat melech, during the time my beautiful daughter of the king is menstruating, hands off. There's no ex expectation of physical intimacy because that is not the space she's in. The space she's in, she's got her period, she's in the state of Nida. Right now is the time for what? For you to be a companion to her, to be a friend to her, to create a relationship with her. And how do you build that while you're dating? That's where the laws of Shomer Negiyah comes. Because when a husband and wife get married, every time that the woman has her period, anywhere from 12 to 14 days, she's Nida. She's off limit physically. She's only available to him emotional intimacy, emotional intelligence. So during the relationship, during the dating, you want to make sure that that ability, that emotional intelligence is something that he has, something that he could work on, something that he can offer because when there is no physical intimacy when there is no touch no hugging no kissing how do you give over your message how do you let someone know you love them and you care about them? it's hard it's hard especially in cultures where men were not very exposed to this that emotional intelligence is a significant factor of the relationship it's really cre cre um, difficult to create that con and it takes time it takes like very simple like small, small steps to build that. So during the time that the woman becomes Nida, was I fast or did that make sense? That makes sense. So so we, when we call it Nida, when we call it Tam'e, it means without life. So we believe when a woman is menstruating, when her uterus wall is shedding, she had within her a potential life that left her. So now she's in a state of Tum'a, Tam'e. And the only way she's going to become back into a state of tahara, purity, is when she goes to the mikveh. And that's why Harav Balhanes from New York says the worst time for a woman to go to the barrier, like to cemetery, may you never ever have to go. He says it's the when she's menstruating. He says when a woman is in a state of menstruation, all the spirits that are in between this world and the world to come, they gravitate and hold on to the woman. Like it's, all, it's a very mystical thing. We don't see it with our eyes, but Kabbalists and stuff see it, meaning she's in such uh, like a, she's in such a different level of her usual self. That's why when women are menstruating, you know, they cry more, they're a lot more sensitive, life just seems disastrous, they don't even want to like deal with it. They think and some women can even get it so low that they could go into premenstrual dysthymic disorder, which is called PMDD. And these women, it's like literally on a verge of clinical depression. And sometimes they have to go on some medication to stabilize themselves. There's nothing like nothing wrong with them, but they just don't know what happened. Suddenly they feel like life is hopeless, their husband is hopeless, their kids are hopeless, the career is hopeless, what's the point of them being alive? Like back to what we were saying, they just feel no sense of self, but it's all chemical and hormones in the head. So and some women can also get it after giving birth, postpartum depression, that their mood goes down. Um, and or, or Zarua is this beautiful book that talks about how every time the woman goes through her menstruation cycle, it's like the, the creation of the new moon again. And it's not by chance. Guess what day the moon is its fullest? No, the moon is the most beautiful on what day? Day number 14, which is exactly around the same when the woman is the most highest chance of ovulation, which is day 14. I'm saying it's not by chance that God compares us to the moon and at the same cycle. Like how would a person know that this is a time a woman's cycle ovulates on day number 14? How would you know this without having like ultrasound unless you're the creator of the woman? You wouldn't know this otherwise. Um, so again, we were talking about the, um, that the, the part of the cycle of the woman is that God said, I created you and I know what's good for you. So this concept of that separation and bringing together, separation and bringing together, is to keep the passion and the excitement alive, that nothing should ever become mundane. Why are our Shabbat dresses more special? Why are our Shabbat 
jewelry more special because we put it on the side and then we use it we put it on the side and then we use it so it becomes more glorified so if it's physical intimacy it's the same way you there's a time for the physical intimacy and bonding to keep the sexuality alive and going and then there's a time for the emotional intimacy some time with the serenity being together being in each other's company and sometimes it's even like being in the living room together in quietness and doing an activity together and having hana'a having an enjoyment in that to create that relationship and connection and as we know women have a cycle they go through a lot of mood swings a lot of emotions comes and ups and downs for them and a lot of men might not be educated about that so it's about educating and by having these laws of taharat hamishbacha the family purity is really about the woman. It's about putting the woman on the pedestal and VIPing the woman that your cycle is so important that the Torah that we bring out talks about it. I mean, you come show me another religion that talks about the female menstruation. Like, you bring me one other religion that really makes an effort to have two different sections in the Torah that talk and says, if you dare come close to her, if you dare come close to her when she's menstruating, you could cause karat for yourself. Meaning what? Your spirit will be disconnected. Not in this world and not in the world to come. It will be wandering. Imagine the severity of it, of how much you need to give space and value and respect to a woman who's menstruating to not get so um, intimacy sexually aroused by her and create a safe, intimate, emotional space for her. Um, so and like this is the prescription that god has provided this is how you keep it and again women don't menstruate their whole lifetime like it's a time bound you know it's usually from the time that you're 12 until you're like mid 40s or 50s and then it stops women going to menopause so you have from 50 on with health and happiness god willing with god's have another 50 years together without having menstruation but unless you built that relationship during that highlight of your life you're not going to have any connection for your retirement life. And part of the menstruation is also like what Lisa was saying about having that self-value, self-love, self-worth. Like what am I besides this wife and mother? Who am I? What am I about? Like creating those sense of meaning so you're not constantly like latching on to like, I can't breathe if you're not there. Like meaning like your husband becoming your source of like oxygen. Your husband is your partner, your spouse but he should not be your lifeline support. Like he should not be your purpose of living. He needs to be someone that together you bring more light and goodness into the world. If you feel like you don't matter, if he's not there, that could go fall under codependency anonymous, like people pleasing and a whole era of like thing. You have to know I am good, I am loved, he is good, he is loved, together we are good and loved. Like if he like doesn't happen to call me or we don't talk, like our relationship doesn't, end or i don't end or i do not exist i always tell people i say especially like with persian women they have this sense of like severe dependency that even when it comes to a cup of tea and in the evening they come sit on the table they tell the husband do you want tea he says no 80 percent of them won't pour themselves a cup of tea you ask them why there's no taste to it alone you know but it's like, you could go pour yourself a cup of tea. Maybe when you drink it, it creates the appetite to wanting it. Or maybe you sit beside him and enjoy it and drink it. It doesn't mean that you should not have it just because he's not in the mood. So the more you create that vibe and that meeting, the more hopeful and light there is within you, the more attraction your husband will have. The more clingy, dependency, hang on, and, and kind of like insignificant and unimportant you are, the more he feels suffocated, you know? Like uh, men cannot ha have to have like that balance and that's why they have a lot of caveman time. They can't. They feel like pulled down, you know? They feel like pulled down by it. So they want to feel like they're thriving with you even though men seem like they have big egos but they really like, you know how they say women reflect this, the light of the sun but the sun also gets impacted by the moon but in a, just another way. So in order for his light to glow is he wants to know that you're there. Like you can, you have an identity of you are the moon, right? You're not a second sun. Like you are the moon. So you have to create that space for yourself to give into that essence of who you are, your goodness, your good feeling. And like, like you were saying that when you are in a good space for yourself, if your husband, your kids have a bad time, you don't let their bad time ruin you. You're allowed to take it in as their bad time. And like, 
not take it in to bring yourself down. And that's the whole system of the laws of Tara Tamishbacha is to teach us that balance between me, you, us, all of that awareness. So um, how does a woman become Nida? How, how, do, you, how do you go into the sta sta state of becoming Nida? The number one that we said is the monthly discharge. The menstruation is what leads you to become Nida. You, you see blood on the cloth that you do the checking, what we're going to talk about. The hymen tear, and it's important to know that some girls may not have a hymen, some girls that might have lost their hymen doing a lot of other activity besides penetration, you know, more research has shown us this. Some girls can be intimate for the first time, not bleed a lot, some can bleed a little bit. These are all different for every girl, it's just different. Their biological body is different. Um, uh, by a gynecologist exam, it can happen, and giving birth. So these are the situations that can put you in the state of becoming Nida. Does that make sense? Any questions? And a, co a question? Huh? Oh, so then also if a woman sees something on her um, clothes and she tells her woman, husband, I'm Nida, without asking a rabbi, that can also make her in the state of Nida. So you have to be very careful. You have to say, let me check. You know, oh, some, I saw something, I need to check. So our words have a lot of power. Thank you for bringing that up. How long? Huh? How long do you use that word? It depends what the rabbi says. So you have to be careful. Whatever you see, you say, I saw something, I need to check it. So don't ever announce yourself as, I am. Then you have to like undo it. Like if you see blood, I'm saying on your... On your no, obvious is like, let's say your period is coming tomorrow and you see it, you say, I'm Nida, it's a different story. I'm saying, let's say five days before your period comes. You see a blood stain on your leg. Right? And you assume, could it be I'm menstruating? But it could be from other things. Also, she's saying sometimes after a fight or something, she pretends to be Nida, but then he and says it. Once you say it, you make it. Then you have to call a rabbi to discuss it. So she's saying be mindful of the labels you're giving yourself. Like, don't take advantage of that. You could say, I'm not in the mood, I'm just having a hard time, rather than taking advantage of the Nida um, excuse. Okay. Huh? Baruch Hashem, Tada La'el. So, um, so, so the period menstruation, according to Harab Obadiah Yosef for Sephardi, is the minimum of four days. Then you could count the seven follow-up days. According to Ashkenazis, it's five days, right? And bleeding, meaning like blood discharge, right? There's different shades of it. Since this is a crash course, we don't need to go into detail. But once the actual blood flow stops, then you go into counting your seven cleanness. In the Jewish calendar, the day starts from the night before. So if you get your period on a Tuesday night, Wednesday is day number one. So you count Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday would be when you do your check to see if you finished bleeding to count seven clear days to be able to go to the mikveh. Does that make sense? So then the day when you do, so you have your four or five days and when, when you have your bleeding days, we have special halachas that apply to that, which are called the harchakot. There are separation that takes place. You have to have a separate bed. Your beds cannot be attached to each other to each other when you eat on the table together you have to put something on the table you cannot have any flirtatious intimate talk do not try on clothing and show it to him you don't you don't want to lead into anything intimate sensual because you're in a, your state of a companionship of your relationship like to remind you like let's say you put a red rose or like a white rose during the time you're supposed to stay apart to just remind both of you not to get into an intimate conversation or you switch seats. Anything, it's called a hacker. Every Anything that's a change. A change to your routine. Can you have emotional intimacy during that So it depends what that emotional intimacy is. If it's a lead on, if it turns him on, because men are more like a rocket ship. So anything that could like ex, um, ex, ignite, ignite? Mm -hmm. ignite the rocket ship, you got to be careful of. Because men's sensitivity is on a very, that's why in the Torah, all the relationship, it says, don't don't have intimate, but for the woman being Nida, it says don't come close to her nakedness. Meaning, don't even get too close that it could lead you on to that because he, she is your wife. So you could play a board game, read a book, play chess, go for a walk. Things that makes you think of companionship and a good friend. 
so it's that shift and that formal it's it's really hard like imagine it's like you go from having kids and this and that to being romantic to friendship romantic to friendship it's a, and i personally i'm very against parents lying to their kids like oh i'm in an argument with your dad oh my back hurts or i mean every family for their own i say it's better to lock your door rather than lie to your kids because you never know what children turn these things in their mind you should ne- you should never make a kedusha of a mitzvah into a trauma for your child you should never turn a torah mitzvah into trauma for your children our words have a big power when children parents might choose to separate but you're not allowed to sleep in separate rooms right you're not allowed to you, you could sleep in the same room but you just have to have two separate beds so one bed could go like a trundle pull it out you put the mattress on the floor again you do the best you can you do the best you can that's my philosophy what do you think about telling your kid a little bit about so what I teach my kids is just like we have weekdays and Shabbat, husband and wives have weekdays and Shabbat too. So when we have the Shabbat of our relationship, we still sleep in um, separate beds. And then we have our like weekday, we go back together. Like, you know, we say there's like, you know, there's like a di- separation. And as they get older, they understand you have girls, you, they understand what a period is, they understand. You never want to scare them. That's my point. You never want to scare them. You say this is the Torah that God gave us. When, he, when mommy is in this situation, me and Abba become like really, really good friends. We talk, we laugh, we have a good time. And when mommy doesn't have that, then we can hug and we could, you know, have physical contact. So I'm saying you should, because your children are learning, even from like the very, very young age. Like I remember the other day, um, I gave my daughter a hug and a kiss. I said, I'll see you later. And then like my daughter had come to take something from the room. She's six years old. He said, oh, I'm going to go give a hug and a kiss to Abba too because I know you can't. I said, why? She said, because your beds are different again. I said, I said, wow, you're so observant. She's like, I'm going to give, him, give Abba a cookie from you and a hug. And I'll say, I'm sending it. So it wasn't like a, anything traumatic or anything bad. She said, I know right now that's the situation you're in. So it was done in a very like friendly of me and Abba love each other we're just in a different in our friendship part of our again every family has their own routine or own policy you could lock your door lock your door but it's very important to be careful what you're saying and how you're explaining it to your kids telling your kid my back hurts dad hurts Abba snores I snores the light is on like these things get stuck in your kid's head you know or they say like how come you just passed by Abba or like if you usually hug and then you don't, are you mad at Abba? Kids are very, very detailed and they pick up the ounces of like little interaction between us. So we always have to be mindful and careful of how we present it. Um, so then I, again, so did that answer your question? So anything, emotional intelligence and connection has to be there. But when it leads into anything, feeling a little bit intimate, or if you wouldn't talk like that in front of your kids, then no, you don't want to bring that out at that point. Um, The beds have to be separate, okay, uh, very formal, and the head care, like I said. Okay, so and then we, so during the, during the time, you wear colored undergarment, but when you go into counting seven clear days to prepare yourself for the mikveh, you have to wear white to make sure that the discharge has stopped and you're getting prepared to go to the mikveh. So the night that you start doing your counting for the seven clean days, when everything goes smoothly, you go to the mikveh that same night the following week. So at the nido time was, is anywhere from 12 to 14 days. During the time you're in the state of nida, you become more like formal companion friend. You built on your emotional connection. You could learn the Bar Torah. You could go for a walk. You could go to a restaurant. There's nowhere that says you're excused from your husband role. Nowhere in any of the Shulchan Aruch, none of them says that's an excuse to escape your home. If their husband's doing that, they need to work on that with the rabbis. This is not the Torah telling them. Like, this is not what it's meant to. Again, you could work out a system with your husband that maybe like that day you'll add on more learning or learning even together. But this is, doesn't mean that you're anything bad or negative. They should be put aside. Does that make sense? Um, do you think date night is too much for... So that um, depends. It should be a date night that's more formal based. If your romantic night is that and they walk by the beach, then maybe you should go to Aroma where you see the whole community. <laughs> so like, you know, that it's like 
You know, that there's more distraction. That it's not going to lead into anything else. And also another thing, there's nowhere that says you should look like a shmate, like during your needle time. There's nowhere that says keep your ugly, lo- ugly pajamas and don't care about your hair and let your mustache and everything grow and do blah, 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 blah. No, you're supposed to look presentable and formal and uh, nothing sensual, right? You're supposed to look presentable and respectful, but on the modest side. So anything that you think can lead to other things, you have to refrain from, but creating a formal friendship and companionship. Um, and also like to create a, something you want, a book you want to learn together, a, t- a Parsha book you want to learn together, or something that creates... Again, and women think when you get married, you're going to be talking to your husband every night for hours. That's not a reality either, like just a reality check for everyone that might assume that's what it is. Like, it just doesn't work like that. Husbands are not like girlfriends, sisters, mothers. They're just a whole category of their own, you know? Like, they even need 10 men to concentrate to God. Like, imagine when it comes to concentrating thoughts. They literally need nine other people to, like, zoom them in to pray to God for 20 minutes. Whereas women don't need that. We can just talk on and on. We don't need nine other people. So their concentration level is very, very limited. So I'm, I'm just being like honest they're just on a different level god created them very differently than he created us so it's just like having that um reality and and not an unrealistic expectation Is it true that men can't do absolutely they're very linear they're very logical they, they get distracted they really get distra- distracted they put their focus in i mean look at their reproductive system it could just do one thing either sperm comes or urine like it can just do but a woman can be menstruating working being sick i'm serious like even within the female reproductive system there's so much going on there for men it's just one thing sometimes they can't do one thing either yeah like something they have a (laughs) no but they're doing something in their own head that plotting or whatever you call it they're just like unwinding it from everything they did we're a go, 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 go. Like my professor at UCLA used to say, like men are like rocket ship and women are the merry-go-round. Every one thing, he says, that's the only reason why women can't pregnant and men can't. You give one embryo to a woman for 40 weeks, you ruminate and ruminate. And for a man, it's just like a one shoot and that's it. So men just process things very different. They think that sitting on the couch is doing something. Even to us, it looks like nothing. There was a whole video of that. We're really like, why aren't you doing anything? And they're like, I am doing something. Because that's what it looks like to them. (laughs) Like so many times, like I tell my husband, like, why aren't you talking to me? And he would say, I'm just sitting. I'm like, well, why are you just sitting? Why can't you just talk to me? He said, well, I'm okay just being here. Like I had such a hard time accepting that because I have three sisters. And like, it was such an adjustment for me. Not like, I always, I thought he was mad at me. And he's like, I'm not mad at you. Why aren't you talking to me? I have nothing to tell you. How do you have nothing to tell me? Like for the years in the beginning of our marriage, this is how the conversation went. He's like, can you stop asking me if I'm mad at you? And I'm like, well, if you weren't mad at me, you would talk to me. And like the conversation, he's like, you need to just get over it. I'm not mad at you. I just have nothing to say to you. Not because I'm mad at you. I just have nothing to say to you you know so it was just like that reality of like oh maybe there is some truth to that that he's just in that state because that's just men are just created very differently god created adam and chava very differently that's just you know how we were made um so again and then on the laws of the tara tamishpacha well, so the tevila whenever you are prepared to go to the mikveh you only can become tahor when you go to the mikveh water nothing else can, i mean if you are in a running water in the ocean can also be acceptable if you're stuck but otherwise nothing is going to make you tahor unless you go into the mikveh it's not filth that you have to wash up it's the it's a mystical concept um you could only go at night only a bride can go during the daytime before sunrise it's a very private concept you don't want to announce it to everyone um, it's a uh, the immersion also like some do dip four times some dip seven times and the preparation of the seven days is there's a bedika cloth which is bedika bodeg comes from checking that you use to do the checking to make sure you're prepared I think I have a YouTube video on that too with the I'm not sure but I can look it up um, and also understanding that this has a lot um, it has a lot to do with our hormones like I was telling you that it's just so fascinating of how it's linked and I was saying also to the season of the year you know like it's just that you have the full moon which is like the fall and winter when the menstruation the shedding of the uterus wall 
and all of that happening and then you have the spring and summer which is like the ovulation and and summer coming um sorry spring and summer and on Shavuot was it that we were talking about the Megillah that I did my beautiful comparison yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So on Shavuot, I had this beautiful chidush. My husband gave me the opportunity to be part of the panel speakers, which was I was very fortunate and blessed. So I compared it that how the seasons of the year are like linked to the Megillot that we have. So if you started from like Megillat Esther, which is springtime, which is when she goes to the mikveh, you have the Megillat Esther, you know, the Queen Esther. When you come from the mikveh, you feel like a queen. You feel all powerful. You feel good about yourself. You feel, you know, all all of the goodness within you. The following week is like the Shavuot. So it's like the Megillat root, which is also the power of root and what root did. And she was the grandmother of David HaMelech. You're still in the strength part. Comes along fall. What do you have? Tisha B'Av, which is the Megillat Eicha. And then the following that we read during Rosh Hashanah is the Megillat Kohelet. And Kohelet talks about different and the Kohelet is even, even referred to as the she talks about the different seasons talk about the differences that a woman goes through and I was yeah. thinking how you how metaphorically all of these seasons are all compared to that feminine energy and the feminine power um, so it's important to find ways to create space for ourselves during the time we're Nida so that we feel rejuvenated during the time of Tahara. So during the time we're Nida, it's good to make an extra effort. You know, like if you want to do a Shiuri maybe once a week during that timing to give yourself a Chizuk, to strengthen yourself. You know, if it's, you know, to work with your husband, something that works between you and your husband. Like I said to you, your husband cannot be your unlimited entertainment channel for that 14 days. So you need to create a good way to have a good balance. Um, yeah. For the Bidika thoughts, if you're somewhere and you don't have Bidika thoughts... Use your husband's tummy. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, the white undershirt. I was joking about the tummy, just a joke. <laughs> no, but the white undershirt. You could use the white undershirt. If you have a white underwear, because you are supposed to be wearing a white underwear, you can just take out and use the white underwear. It's a white 100% cloth. If you're stuck, you don't want to lose the day... Wipe won't work. Okay. No, wipe doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. if you see something on it, you need to show a rabbi, then... But the husband's white undershirt can be used also. Yeah. You just wash it off. Yeah. But if you get stuck, you get... That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you could use panty liner. You could show panty liner if something comes on it. There are some rabbanim that might, you should ask a rabbi to make sure, but... And some girls need to get used to what colors are okay. We had many, many women that were keeping Nida for 18 days. Like by the time they were going to the mikveh, they got their period again because they were waiting for no discharge at all to come. And then they were counting their seven days because spe especially the type A people that are perfectionists, like on the verge of OCD, they were like thinking that they should see nothing. So it caused a lot of problems. So yeah, it's a good like question. Yeah. Like white. certain brownish, certain light brown. Yeah, I should have yeah, you should. Can you wear colored underwear with a white panty liner? You have to ask a rabbi to make sure. But there, there are rabbis that might be able to give you the permission. Mm -hmm. And for the bedika cloth, if you like have difficulty and challenges and you can't do two a day because it's technically doing two a day, one in the morning, one before sundown. If it's too hard for you, you should always speak with a rabbi to get heter. But the minimum is the hefsek tahara, day number one and day number seven is the minimum that you need. We could do like a more detailed version. During the seven clear, clear days, days she's right. talking oh, about. Yes. Yeah. I don't like calling it clean days. I don't like that word. Yeah. I like to call it like when you're clear. Because it has nothing to do with dirty and clean. I it's just meaning like blood. blood. Yeah. If you do stop. No, you use the bedika cloth for the checking has to be a bedika cloth. Yeah, but like if you have to check it every day. That's what I'm saying. Some girls that have very sensitive vaginal area, they could get permission to do the one and day seven. Do the Hefsek Tahara, day one and day seven. You just could discuss it with your rabbi. Um, okay? And I'm just trying to like wrap it up so I, 
I want you to be able to do a talk. So hopefully we'll do a round two. I just want to end it with something that's just so amazing and fascinating. So the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch has a name for what we call the male reproductive system, female reproductive system. I was so fascinated to know that the name that the female reproductive system is called, it's called Hamakom. Hamakom. Hamakom is the same place that's called in the Beit HaMikdash at Har HaMoriyah. The place where God told Abraham to tell Yitzchak to go and shech, like to do the Shechita is called Hamakom. The place where the Beit HaMikdash is built and God's Shechina dwells on it is called Hamakom. When a person is sitting on a loot and their loved one has passed away, you come up to them and you say what? Hamakom, like that should give you comfort amongst. Hamakom is the place where life begins. It is the place where the Shekhinah of God unites with the embryo and a baby comes into existence. I mean, do you like the magnitude of all the names, of all the names? You know, Persians say, Injunakon Zeshte, Ebe, Baba, Baba. And here God comes and calls it in Shulchan Aruch and in the Mishnah and the Gamara. The, the male reproductive system is called at the Ever. The female is called Hamakom. Hamakom, the place. So I want to end our shiur for the part one of Crash Course of our Tara Tamishbacha is to understand that the value of the feminine energy and the value of being a woman and these mitzvot and the Torah obligation that God has given us is only because He cherishes us, He values us, and He knows what we're worth. If it wasn't that, He would not call the most sacred place in our body the same name as the place where He united and the, the Beit HaMikdash is built on. This is not by chance. So the value and the sacredness of us, our body, and that intimacy and that connection that happens in Judaism we believe there's a time and place for everything we don't think intimacy is bad dirty or ugly we think it we think it's beautiful it's kodesh it's holy as long as what it's done at the right place at the right time and with the right person thank you so much for listening may this learning be for a zahut of refash lema for everyone for all the singles that are sitting here in health and happiness find their zivuk on. for those of us that are married the next chapter to maintain the shalom bayit and growth find favor in our husband's eyes and they find favor in our eyes thank you